Welcome to Starting Scripture, uh, reading of the Bible with Keturah. Today is day 93, and we are reading Judges, uh, chapters 10 and 11, Psalm 146. There is a screen share that goes along with Judges 10 and 11. We'll start with Judges 10. Tola becomes Israel's judge. After Abimelech died, Tola, son of Pua, son of Dodo, was the next person to rescue Israel. He was from the tribe of Issachar, but lived in the town of Shamir, in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Israel for 23 years. When he died, he was buried in Shamir. Jair becomes Israel's judge. After Tola died, Jair from Gilead judged Israel for 22 years. His 30 sons rode around on 30 donkeys, and they owned 30 towns in the land of Gilead, which are still called the towns of Jair. When Jair died, he was buried in Kaman. The Ammonites oppressed Israel. Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal and Ashtoreth and the gods of Aram, Aram Sidon, Moab, Ammon, and Philistia. They abandoned the Lord and no longer served him at all. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel, and he turned them over to the Philistines and the Ammonites, who began to oppress them that year. For 18 years, they oppressed all the Israelites east of the Jordan River in the land of the Amorites that is, in Gilead. The Ammonites who crossed to the west side of the Jordan and attacked Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. The Israelites were in great distress. Finally, they cried out to the Lord for help, saying, we have sinned against you because we have abandoned you as our God and have served the images as Baal. The Lord replied, did I not rescue you from the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Moabites, Moanites? When they oppressed you, you cried out to me for help, and I rescued you. Yet you have abandoned me and served other gods, so I will not rescue you anymore. Go and cry out to the gods you have chosen. Let them rescue you in your hour of distress. But the Israelites pleaded with the Lord and said, We have sinned. Punish us as you see fit. Only rescue us today from our enemies. Then the Israelites put aside their foreign gods and served the Lord, and he was grieved by their misery. At that time, the armies of Ammon had gathered for war and were camped in Gilead, and the people of Israel assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of Gilead said to each other, whoever attacks the Ammonites first will become ruler over all the people of Gilead. Jephthah becomes Israel's judge. Now Jephthah of Gilead was a great warrior. He was the son of Gilead, but his mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also had several sons. And when these half-brothers grew up, they chased Jephthah off the land. You will not get any of our father's inheritance, they said, for you are the son of a prostitute. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Soon, he had a band of worthless rebels following him. At about this time, the Ammonites began their war against Israel. When the Ammonites attacked, the elders of Gilead sent for Jephthah in the land of Tob. The elders said, come and be our commander. Help us fight the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to them, aren't you the ones who hated me and drove me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? Because we need you, the elders replied. If you lead us in battle against the Ammonites, we will make you ruler over all the people of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders, let me get this straight. If I come with you, and if the Lord gives me victory over the Ammonites, you will really make me ruler over all the people? The Lord is our witness, the elders replied. We promise to do whatever you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him their ruler and commander of the army. At Mizpah, in the presence of the Lord, Jephthah repeated what they had what he had said to the elders. Then Jephthah said messengers to the king of Ammon, asking, why have you come out to fight against my land? The king of Ammon answered Jephthah's messengers. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, they stole my land from the Arnon River to the Jabbok River and all the way to the Jordan. Now then, give back the land peaceably. Jephthah sent this message back to the Ammonite king. This is what Jephthah says. Israel did not steal any land from Moab or Ammon. When the people of Israel arrived at Kadesh on their journey from Egypt after crossing the Red Sea, they sent messengers to the king of Edom asking for permission to pass through his land, but their request was denied. Then they asked the king of Moab for similar permission, but he, would not let, he wouldn't let them pass through either. So the people of Israel stayed in Kadesh. Finally, they went around Edom and Moab through the wilderness. They traveled along Moab's eastern border and camped on the other side of the Arnon River. They never once crossed the Arnon River into Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to King Shehan of the Amorites, who ruled from Heshbon, asking for permission to cross through his land to get to their destination. But King Shehan 
didn't trust Israel to pass through his land. Instead, he mobilized his army at Shahaz and attacked them. But the Lord, the God of Israel, gave his people victory over King Shahan. So Israel took control of all the land of the Amorites who lived in that region, from the Arnon River to the Jabbok River, and from the Eastern Wilderness to the Jordan. So you see, it was the Lord, the God of Israel, who took away the land from the Amorites and gave it to Israel. Why then should we give it back to you? You keep whatever your God, Shamash, gives you, and we will keep whatever the Lord, our God, gives us. Are you any better than Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he try to make a case against Israel for disputed land? Did he go to war against them? Israel has been living here for 300 years, inhabiting Heshbon and its surrounding settlements, all the way to Aror and its settlements, and in all the towns along the Arnon River. Why have you made no effort to recover it before now? Therefore, I have not sinned against you. Rather, you have wronged me by attacking me. Let the Lord, who is judge, decide today. Which of us is right, Israel or Ammon? But the king of Ammon paid no attention to Jephthah's message, Jephthah's vow. At that time, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he went throughout the land of Gilead and Manasseh, including Mizpah and Gilead. And from there, he led an army against the Ammonites, and Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. He said, if you give me victory over the Ammonites, I will give to the Lord whatever comes out of my house to meet me when I return in triumph. I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. So Jephthah led his army against the Ammonites, and the Lord gave him victory. He crushed the Ammonites, devastating about 20 towns around from Aror to an area near Minith and as far away as Abel Karimim. In this way, Israel defeated the Ammonites. When Jephthah returned home to Mizpah, his daughter came out to meet him, playing on a tambourine and dancing for joy. She was his one and only child. He had no other sons or daughters. When he saw her, he tore his clothes in anguish. Oh, my daughter, he cried out, you have completely destroyed me. You've brought disaster on me, for I've made a vow to the Lord, and I cannot take it back. And she said, Father, if you have made a vow to the Lord, you must do to me what you have vowed, for the Lord has given you a great victory over your enemies, the Ammonites. First, let me do this one thing. Let me go up and roam in the hills and weep with my friends for two months, because I will die a virgin. You may go, Jephthah said, and he sent her away for two months. She and her friends went into the hills and wept because she would never have any children. When she returned home, her father kept the vow he made, he had made, and she died a virgin. So it has become a custom in Israel for young Israelite women to go away for four days each year to lament the fate of Jephthah's daughter. And now Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have, who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your daughter, your servant, is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>